Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I want to return to my Deeper Understanding series and dig into the Container Relative Frame View modifier for SwiftUI. It's a really powerful modifier, but there are some things that you need to be aware of before you start to implement it in your own projects. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. At WWDC 23, Apple introduced a new view modifier for SwiftUI called the Container Relative Frame. And according to Apple, it positions the view within an invisible frame with a size relative to the nearest container. And you can use this modifier to specify a size for a view's width height, or both, that is dependent on the size of the nearest container. Well, many saw this as a better replacement for Geometry Reader. This is not the case, however. Perhaps the best article I've read on this topic was in Fat Bob Man's blog called Mastering the Container Relative Frame Modifier in SwiftUI. I'll leave a link in the description. It wasn't until I read this article that I got a better appreciation for the power and the limitations of this modifier. So in this video, I want to take you through a number of scenarios where this modifier is useful and how to overcome some limitations. There is a starter project for this tutorial and I encourage you to download it and work along with me. The link to the GitHub repository is in the description. Just make sure you choose the starter branch. The completed branch will contain the completed code for this video. The project is just a series of views where I present a number of different scenarios, so it's set up already for you. In this first view, I'm presenting a red color view with a fixed frame of a width of 200 and a height of 300. Well, we know that SwiftUI will center that view within the container. Well, we can add a container relative frame view modifier to the view and provide one or more axes and alignments. If we just specify horizontal, and leave the alignment out, nothing changes. If, however, we provide a horizontal alignment of, say, trailing, we'll see the view moves to the right of the container or the trailing edge, but still centered vertically. So we can change the axis to vertical and the alignment to, say, bottom, for example, and we see that it pushes the view to the bottom and abides by that safe area restriction. Well, the axis is a set, so we can include both vertical and horizontal if we like, like this. And then we can position the view at any one of the four different parent container's corners. For example, top leading. This all looks really good. However, all is not as it may appear. What is a container? Well, we think of containers as being things like vStacks, hStacks, scroll views, tab views, etc. So if we were to enclose this color and its modifiers in a vStack, then that should be the parent container, right? And if we set a frame on the vStack, it should constrain the position of that child content. Right again? Well, unfortunately not. And this is because the container relative frame view modifier only considers the following as containers. A window presenting a view on an iPad or Mac OS or the screen of a device on iOS. Or a column of a navigation split view or a navigation stack. Or a tab of a tab view or a scroll view like a scroll view or a list. The size provided to this modifier is the size of a container like the ones that I've just mentioned subtracting any safe area insets that might be applied to that container. So if we change that vStack to a tab view, we'll see the red view move. And if we add a border of, say, green to the tab view, we'll see that we're getting what we expect. The view is positioned horizontally and vertically at the top leading edge of the tab view. So far, we've used the simple overload or initializer for this view modifier, but there are more that could become really very useful. In this second example, I've created another color view, 
and set the frame to be the width of the screen and the height of the screen divided by 2. So the view is centered nicely on the screen. And this works nicely for any of the devices as when the view appears it gets the screen width and height and then divides it by 2 and sets the frame. Well there are many problems with this implementation. This might be in a navigation split view where you can dismiss the sidebar so the view should grow. But since the view is already displayed it won't change this red color. Or what if we change the orientation? We can see here that it doesn't change either. We'll want to maintain that half size regardless, so we'll need to use a different approach. So let me comment this out and recreate it again so that we'll have something to compare to. Well, in the past you might have thought about that geometry reader was the solution, and I have an entire video on that topic too for your reference. I'll leave a link in the description. Well, you can embed the color in a geometry reader to get the proxy, which gives us access to the size of the enclosing container and its coordinate space. So we can use a proxy size.width and a proxy size.height to specify the frame size. However, the anchor is now at the top leading edge, which is not what I want. And the size is still wrong for different orientations, so that's not a solution. So let's revert back to that red color view and apply a container relative frame modifier with both axes. But I want to choose the initializer that instead of alignment, I'll just choose the length argument. So for the axes, we'll choose the set of both horizontal and vertical. I can then hit enter on the trailing closure and this will give us a placeholder for the dimension and the axis in question. So we'll specify dimension as the placeholder, but since we are not going to be applying a different factor based on the axis, both will be half of the dimension, we can just use an underscore to ignore the axis. And then in the closure then the dimension will be the value for the dimension in the specified axis and we'll return it divided by 2. Now when we check out the different screen variants for orientations, we'll see that it is exactly what we want. Now if you want to specify a different ratio for horizontal over vertical, then you can use the axis argument. So let me add one back in here. And then for example, if I wanted the horizontal width be two-thirds the presenting containers view, we can do it this way. So let's consider this view on this screen. I have an H stack with a specific height of 150 and some padding, and inside we have two views where the first green color view is set to one-third the screen width, and the blue view takes up the remaining space. You'll probably realize that this is just as bad as our first example as it won't change as we rotate the device. So how can we fix this using our knowledge of container relative frame? So let's remove the frame on that green rectangle first. And since we know that the container relative frame view modifier will not apply to an H stack, what we can do is embed the H stack in a horizontal scroll view before we set the padding and the frame height. So the scroll view is just acting as a parent container. Well, this doesn't give us what we want because in a scroll view, the width of the items in the H stack are undefined. However, the scroll view frame is going to be the same size as the original H stack. So we can use the container relative frame to determine each dimension of the horizontal axis. So for the green rectangle then, we can specify the horizontal axis to get the dimension. And then, our width is going to be the dimension times the ratio. And then for the blue rectangle, we'll basically do exactly the same thing. However, our dimension is going to be in the horizontal width, the dimension times 1 minus the ratio. Now this looks pretty good, and it gives us what we want, except that it's a scroll view, and we don't want that scroll behavior. So we can disable that behavior by applying a scroll disabled of true modifier to the view, and there we have it.
There's another initializer for the container relative frame modifier that is extremely useful when presenting content in a horizontal or a vertical scroll view. So consider this view. We have an array of colors laid out in a lazy V stack within a horizontal scroll view, and the scroll view has a specific height of 300. Now, since we know that the scroll view can be used as the container for a container relative frame modifier, or the H stack can't, we can set the width of each of the colors for the for each loop to be the width of the scroll view, simply by applying a container relative frame in the horizontal. Now I have an entire video on modifiers of scroll views as they changed in iOS 17, and I'll leave a link in the description. But in this video, I want to look specifically at how we can apply the container relative frame. Right now, each color extends to be the entire width of the scroll view. So we could use a new initializer that allows us to specify an axis count and spacing between each object. So for example, along the horizontal axis, we we'll want to divide the available space in four with a spacing of 10. So we'll see exactly four colors displayed within the view. And when we scroll, we get to see the remainder. Well, this is nice, but there is another argument that we can add, and that is the span, which comes after the count argument. In this case, we can see that we'll divide the horizontal space in four, but each of them will take up three of those allotments. And since we're only specifying the horizontal axis for each of the colors, the height will expand to be the entire height of the scroll view frame, which is 300. Sometimes, however, we'd like to maintain a specific ratio for the width and height, as we might if those colors were images in a carousel view, for example, which we'll see shortly. So in this case, what we can do prior to setting the container relative frame is we can specify an aspect ratio of whatever we want. So we'll specify perhaps three divided by two or 1.5 with a content mode of fit. So for this final example, let's take a look at a possibility with images. And I've added nine images to the assets folder for this sample project. And all are photos that I've taken from some time in the past. So I'm going to copy the scroll view and frame from this current view. And I'm going to go to the final view and replace the text view with that image scroll view. So it's exactly the same as the previous one. However, I'm going to change the for each loop to loop over an open range of 1 through 10. So 1 up to and including 9 with that idea of self to get an index. And then I can change the color view to be an image. And that image will simply be using string interpolation to access the image with the string image and appending the index as the suffix. Now, this doesn't give us what we want, but because they're images, we can say that we want the images to be resizable. Now, this is a very rough representation of an image carousel, and we can do much better than that. And I have a complete video on this topic, so I'll leave a link in the description. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and you'll find some use for the techniques shown in your own projects. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notification of new videos. You can check out all other videos of my channel by downloading my channel listing application for free. A link is in the description.